Hello, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Redwine. I'm going to walk you through the launch of our very first science project. So science in our personalized learning is two parts. We have projects and we have power focus areas. The projects are 70% of your grade, so make sure that you are really focusing on these projects. So let's talk about what scientists do. Scientists like to answer questions and solve problems about the natural world. And they do this by using critical thinking and scientific problem solving methods to make informed decisions. So they're kind of like mathematicians. They both like to answer questions and solve problems, just kind of about different things. And a lot of times the two over, uh, overlap. OK, I want you, we're going to watch a video uh, by the Mythbusters. Um, and the video is to see how a team sets up a test to find the answer to the question. And the question they have, is spider silk stronger than steel? The age-old scientific myth that spider silk is stronger than steel is coming down to the wire. In their initial small-scale test, 500 strands of spider silk proved to be twice as strong as its steel equivalent. And now the Mythbusters are ready to take this test to an unprecedented scale. There we go. To test the strength of a 28-gauge steel wire to its matching equivalent in density, a whopping 25,000 strands of spider silk collected from 42 spiders over the course of five weeks. This is quite possibly the largest amount of spider silk that's ever been brought to bear on a test like the one we're about to do, to compare this to the strength of steel of the same mass. Why go to this length? It's a great question. The fact is, is when you're testing stuff in scale, as long as you iterate, you can come to some good conclusions, but the best way to get great results is to experiment in the largest scale you can, hence this monster. And for this final Silk versus Steel Smackdown, the team has adapted the test rig with a clever addition. With our new rig here, we'll be conducting two different experiments. The first with our length of steel twine here, with our water being released in a controlled manner down to this bottom tank here. And it will weigh down that cable until hopefully it'll sever and we'll be able to see how much weight in water is causing that thing to snap. If the results of the previous test hold true, I'm pretty sure that spider silk is going to kick Steel's butt. Cue the butt kicking attempt. The 28 gauge wire's up first. Steel wire test in three, two, one. They've traded out washers and paper clips for over 40 pounds of water. It's so amazing. So quiet. Gravity does its job, and as the water trickles into the lower bucket, the steel wire starts to suffer from some serious water weight gain. It's Oh, wow, look at that. It's really moving. It's stretching. It's visibly moving. That is crazy. I heard a noise. Ooh, ooh. That was cool. fantastic. That couldn't be a better result. All right, let's weigh this puppy. 12.5 pounds, Cannon. That's a result. Let's set up for spider silk. Definitely. 25,000 strands, to be exact. There we go. It's a nice yellow color. I'm going to let it take on the weight. Ah. This is the most amount of spider silk that's been tested in this kind of test, maybe ever. Nine and a half miles of silk right there. That's crazy. Nine and a half miles. <laughs> that's insane. You guys are ready? Totally. Yep. 25,000 strands of spider silk in three, two, one. Releasing the water. <laughs> quart by quart, it's now stretched about a full inch. The 25,000 strands of silk bears the load. OK, we've passed the weight of the steel. Whoa. So. The silk has surpassed the steel's holding power. We're coming up on double but the strain of the weight is taking its toll. <gasps> what was that? That was it side snapped. Whoa! <laughs> ah! 
That's the result. Oh, man, that was cool. That was fantastic. All right, our steel wire held 12.5 pounds. This is the amount of water it's equivalent in mass in spider silk held, and it is... Cue the drum roll. 26. 26 pounds! That is so cool. Aren't you excited? Yep. Here, give me excited. a high five. We are so psyched. <gasps> Can you tell? <laughs> Just as it did in the previous density equivalency test, the spider silk proved to be a little more than twice as strong as the steel. Two head-to-head -head density tests two almost identical results. A satisfying conclusion for this classic scientific myth. This is definitely one of my favorite stories this season. No fire, no bombast, just nine and a half miles of spider silk and a set of really elegant methodologies for testing its strength. And uh, you can picture in your head what a fine steel wire feels like, like jeweler's wire, you can feel that. Okay, now I want you to hold that in your head and watch this. This is, this is so gossamer, it is barely even there. And the idea that it held twice as much weight as the steel wire, mind blowing. All right, Mythbusters, it's time to call this one. From a mass perspective in a tensile strength test, is it true that spider silk is stronger than steel? How do you find? Well, I mean, it tested twice as strong consistently. So I would say confirmed. 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 Confirmed it is. All right, thank you, spiders. Thank you, spider. No spiders were harmed during the filming of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a really cool video, wasn't it? So nor normally we would do a think pair share with this activity, but um, because we're doing virtual learning, we're going to do it a little different. So you are going to, in a minute, go into Google Classroom and you'll answer these questions. Um, there will be a, a question um, uh, for you in, in Google Classroom. Um, and here's the two questions. Number one, what is the test comparing? And two, how is the strength of steel wire and spider silk being measured? So you're going to pause your video in a minute and you're going to uh, think about those questions and then answer those two questions in the, in the um, in short answer form in Google Classroom under uh, science. And um, then you can, when you're finished with that, you can come back and restart your video for the next section. Okay, so now that you're finished with that in Google Classroom, we will move on. And let's look at some of the answers um, that you, these are some answers you might have come up with. So number one, what is the test comparing? It was comparing the strength of a 20H gauge steel wire to the strength of spider silk. And that matches the density of the steel wire. They compared that. And then steel wire versus 25,000 strands of spider silk. And then number two, how is the strength being measured? They're measuring the mass that silk can hold and the mass that steel wire can hold. So they're wanting to see which one holds the most. So what does this have to do with our project? Well, just like the Mythbusters team set up a simple test to determine the answer to a question they had, you're gonna conduct your own investigation that follows a scientific design. Okay, so this is what you're going to be graded on. And they're called COG skills. And these skills are the essential skills that we're looking for in a particular project. There's lots of other things that you're going to be putting into the project, but these are the that that's going to come together to make a good project. But these are particularly what we're looking at. So we're looking at asking questions, predicting and hypothesizing, planning and carrying out investigations, interpreting data information to make valid claims, and selecting relevant resources. Now, these COG skills are, some of them are being tested in part one of this investigation project, and some of them are being tested, are being graded in part two of your project, and some of them are being graded in one and two. So this just lets you know what we're really, really looking for in your projects. 
All right, so specifically, this is what a uh, parts of the rubric look like. This is um, the first one, asking questions. Um, you see that there's a one, two, and three up here. One, this represents the number of points that we, you would get based upon how you um, did in the asking questions part of your project. So if you, to score one point, questions are relevant to a specific topic. So you want to make sure that your questions are relevant to a specific topic. To do that, you'll get one point. If you want two points, then you need to, um, you need to, the questions are relevant to a specific topic, just like they were in the one point, but it also includes that they're based on the described problem or situation. So whatever your question is has to be based on what it is that you're, um, that, that you're, you're looking to investigate. To get all three of them, it has to have all the things for one and for two, but to get three points, you need to also add that it's testable or researchable and it builds on prior knowledge about the topic. So those are three things that we're looking for for asking questions. Predicting and hypothesizing. So once again, we have one point, two points, or three points. For one point, it, you make a prediction that is partially relevant to, or to the inquiry question with little or no reasoning. So it kind of has to do with it, but there's like not a whole, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. To get two points, you're going to make a prediction related to the inquiry question. So it has to be, it's going to be fully related. Number one was partially. This is totally related to your question. And then it also supports reasoning for prediction with prior observances and experiences. Three, for three points, you're going to make a reasonable prediction related to the inquiry question that involves you're going to change a variable. Um, and it's, you're going to begin to explain reasoning for prediction by relating it to prior knowledge, such as cause and effect relationships. Planning and carrying out investigations, you can see one, two, and three, and you can read and see how um, one is like the minimum, two, it adds some stuff to it, and three is everything, okay? Same here, you can read that part on your own, so you can pause in between each of these and really look at what we're looking for. And then the last one is selecting relevant sources. So for selecting relevant sources, we want to not really do the first part. That doesn't really um, apply to science. So this is a cog scale that you might find in reading as well. So you might find it in reading and you might find it in science or writing or history or whatever. But so, you, I'm sorry, you will not find it in science. The bottom part is, a, um, is relevant to what we do in science, saying that we accurately describe key organizing features and sections in a nonfiction test. And you're able to analyze in detail um, the specific paragraph and, or specific sentence supports uh, the understanding of a key concept. So you're able to analyze it and how it, um, how it uh, impacts your key concept. What, why is it important to that? So that's for one point. For two, it's so you're going to select information relevant to the resource que research question. That's the important part right there. And you're going to do it from um, just some different kind of sources that are listed here. To get all three points, you need to select sources that provide key evidence relative to the research question. So you have to have um, really important evidence that um, is relevant to your, your question, the thing that you're asking. And then when it's relevant, the sources are going to vary in format. So we're going to want, um, we're going to want some um, websites, we're going to want books, we're going to want um, encyclopedias. Now back to the books. The books and the encyclopedias both, you can access those online because you're not right now going to be able to answer access those from our actual library. Um, you can do interviews. That's another really great way to get your, your thing. So that's the end um, of what I have to say today. And you hear my lovely dog barking. I mean, somebody's probably home. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. Um, and um, we'll have, we'll start um, the actual 
first checkpoint tomorrow.